Hey guys, it's Hop, Hop's Metal Signs. I've been uh, showing you the use of my bead roller, and you've seen me producing some art in, in, the, in the sheet metal. And today what I would like to show you is how to produce a rusted patina on some fresh and clean sheet metal. So uh, here in a moment, you're, I'm going to go back here, and, and uh, again, I'm by myself. So I'm going to uh, make some camera adjustments and uh, tell you what I got, kind of what I got going on here. So please be patient with me, and I uh, want to thank everybody that's following me. Uh, in my last video, I had a shout out to Grant Fay, and uh, here we go. So uh, hit that comment button. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you want to see. I want to know. And uh, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you up to date every time I release a new video. So today we're showing you rusted patinas. So I'm going to adjust the camera. And uh, hang in here with me. And so I want you to see what I've got going on. Is uh, I just got a simple kerosene heater down here. And that's warming that piece of sheet metal for me. So it makes the chemical process a little more aggressive. And uh, hey guys, it's Hop, Hop's Metal Signs. I've been uh, showing you the use of my bead roller, and you've seen me producing some art in, in, the, in the sheet metal. And today, what I would like to show you is how to produce a rusted patina on some fresh and clean sheet metal. So uh, here in a moment, you're, I'm going to go back here and, and uh, again, I'm by myself. So I'm going to uh, make some camera adjustments and uh, tell you what I got, kind of what I got going on here. So please be patient with me and I uh, want to thank everybody that's following me. Uh, in my last video, I had a shout out to Grant Fay and uh, here we go. So uh, hit that comment button. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you want to see. I want to know. And uh, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you up to date every time I release a new video. So today we're showing you rusted patinas. So I'm going to adjust the camera. And uh, hang in here with me. And so I want you to see what I've got going on. Is uh, I just got a simple kerosene heater down here. And that's warming that piece of sheet metal for me. So it makes the chemical process a little more aggressive. And uh, here we go. So what I've got, we're going to see being placed on the sheet metal first is a mildly acidic solution. And I'm just going to kind of spray it on here. And then to... Uh, to help things out a bit. Like I say, it's acidic, so you really don't want to get your fingers in it. Right. But I'm going to go ahead and put that on like that. And the sheet metal is kind of warm. I'm going to go ahead and let that heat for a minute. And I think I'll go ahead and hit part of this one more time. minute. What you're seeing me working on top of the plate is my uh, plasma cutting table. So now I've got, I've got some acid etching going on. And now, for the next part of this process, um, good old fashioned peroxide. And, uh, I'm going to miss this on really fine. And let it warm. And that heat's going to cause that peroxide to evaporate. And you can already see I got some coloring going on. And this isn't very aggressive today. The more heat you use, more aggressive everything becomes.
say that this rusting agent is good old fashioned peroxide. Go down to any one of your uh, convenience stores that likes to sell out of date products and uh, straight into a one dollar cheap spray bottle. And if you want to see things get a little more aggressive, oops, that was the, uh, oh shoot, garbage bucket. I got just a little propane torch here, and I'm going to go ahead and add, add a little heat. Help dry it. Let's say the more heat you use, the more aggressive your finishes can become. Your patina, patina, I mean. And as it dries, it'll go from a, all the dark oranges to uh, more of a powdery color. And then if you just leave it, you can, well, you can coat this with some transmission oil. Or uh, what I like to use is just an inexpensive satin aerosol. clear and it'll hold this rust patina tight to the metal and it's not a real deep finish deep as in etched into the metal but it's a surface coloring and you can see over here in this corner it's kind of dark we have a little more of that peroxide sitting there. And we'll go ahead and add a little bit more. Ooh, come on, bottle. The bottle gets a little honoring once in a while. But the more layers you add, more times you allow it to dry, the more rich your finish will become. So I'm going to step around behind this camera real quick. I want to see uh, this looks like to you guys. So hang in here with me for a moment. And uh, yeah, you can you can see that color. You can see the heat waves too coming up off of that uh, kerosene heater. We're going to readjust this camera and see if I can get myself back in frame. So, uh, when you get a, another kind of feel, full view of the shop. So, again, this is Hops, Hops Metal Signs. Uh, here's you another shout out to Dennis Zerve. He's my latest follower. Welcome on board, Dennis. Uh, guys, tell me what you want to see. Hit that comment button. Give me a like. Share me to your friends. Shoot, I might even show you a funny someday. So, uh, hopefully this ain't too hot. But now we can see 
some coloring going on on here. And uh, what I won't show you here, and most everybody knows how to do it, so I'm going to take a DA with some 220 grit sandpaper, sand this, which is going to polish the highlights. So you'll see shiny parts, and uh, once that's done, cleared up, with a matte finish, it's going to look really sharp. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed seeing how simple it is to create patina finish and rust. It is rather quick and simple, but it doesn't take a bunch of fancy, fancy stuff. So uh, thank you again. Have you a great day and uh, Merry Christmas to y'all. That's how we do it. Talk to you later. Bye.